We've got an Instagram question here from Emily. She says, I'm at a church, a new church, where they recite the Lord's Prayer. I have never been to a church that recited prayers. I would love to hear your thoughts about this. Yeah, um, y- you know, Emily, uh, we do this in our church, and there, there are two things to avoid here, vain repetition and undisciplined prayers. So those are the two things, the sort of guardrails here. I think sometimes fellow believers oppose formal prayers like the Lord's Prayer because they think it's vain repetition. Uh, but we can mindlessly sing praise songs, can't we? Mm. We can repeat the same phrase over and over again. I hear, I hear informal prayers where you know people often will say the same phrase over and over again. Lord, we just, just, Lord, uh, we, Father God, Father God, Lord, yeah, just. just. Um, the danger of vain repetition faces all of our prayers, whether they're said or sung, whether they're formal or informal. A lot of our prayers in public worship and also in private uh, devotions are often undisciplined. I know we don't think about that. Disciplined prayers. Why? How can you talk about our prayers needing to be disciplined? Well, do we say that our teaching needs to be disciplined, that we need to actually be accurate in what we teach or preach? Sure. That we should be accurate in how we believe we should live? Yeah, sure. Then why would we think that we can talk to God without any real regard for who he is, according to his word, and how he says we should approach him? Uh, spontaneity is almost an idol in the church today. Hmm. You know, just it has to come out of your heart. It has to be it has to be spontaneous. It has to bubble out of your heart. Well, not if you're a Hindu in your prayers, all right? Not if you're a Unitarian. Uh, you, you know, uh, I hear prayers all the time where people will say at the end, in your name, amen. Well, it's a Unitarian prayer, as if there's one person in the Trinity. You're praying to the Father, and then you're telling him, I'm praying in your name. No, the Father says, no one can come to me apart from the name of Jesus Christ. No other name in heaven and earth has been given other than the name of Jesus. And so we pray in Jesus' name. I'll I'll correct prayers. When I hear students do that sometimes uh, in in seminary, I'll stop them right Mm -hmm. in the middle of it and say, you know, they'll say, I remember being hit by the ruler. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a, a, a an an irreligious thing to do to interrupt somebody's prayer. No, it's not. if you're going to lead the people of God in prayer, you're going to lead them into the throne room of God. You better know who you're talking to. You're talking to the Father in the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Lord's prayer, you know, isn't it? Interesting, it's occasioned by Jesus' criticism of the long and ostentatious, spontaneous prayers of the Pharisees. They love to be seen in public going on and on in their prayers, standing on street corners. All old King James English, you know, yeah, real eloquent. Yeah, exactly. And so the disciples asked, how should we pray? And Jesus said, pray like this. Ooh, he's interrupting their spontaneity. <laughs> It's it's a trellis. You know, uh, a trellis can't make plants grow. It can't make the vine grow. But it can help the vine to grow in the right direction. We need a trellis. And Jesus gave them a trellis. Pray in this way. You begin with God. You don't start your prayers with yourself. You start your prayers with God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Start with God and his kingdom and his priorities, and then go to forgiveness of sins, daily bread. And this is is a pattern for our prayers. Now, you know, uh, what about prayers that somebody else wrote? Well, we're reading revelation that other people received uh, from God in the Bible. We're hearing sermons that someone else wrote. In prayers, whether they're said or sung, we're teaching our hearts to grow up into the Father through Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So regardless of whether we use written prayers of others, for instance, a prayer book, uh, we should think about 
writing out our prayer sometimes just to check uh, how closely they follow the Word of God. Mm. The Word of God has to has to to discipline or teach, instruct, and correct our prayers as much as our teaching. One last thing here, I, you know, Paul says in uh, Colossians three sixteen that the purpose of our singing in fact, which are prayers, they're sung prayers, is not just to express our spontaneity, but rather to teach and admonish and correct each other so that the Word of Christ may dwell in us richly. I don't think we often think, uh, Adriel, about how prayer is part of instruction and that we need to be taught how to pray in an accurate fashion. It's not just our the Lord is indulgent. Mm. Our Father, He hears and delights to hear prayers that fall far beneath His dignity. But how much better it is as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that we talk to Him as a Father, but also the Father who is hallowed yeah. in heaven. As you were talking there, it reminded me of the first prayer I can recall making when I was just struck with the gospel and one night talking to the Lord and saying, God, you know, I, I, I know I'm pretty bad, but I really don't want to have to go to church. Please don't make me go to church. And just thinking <laughs> like, wow, I prayed that. You know? And God is, like you said, he's so merciful. He's so kind. I was also thinking, you know, thinking in terms of discipline in prayer. I mean, if we only did the right thing, what we knew we should do when we felt like doing it, wouldn't it be devastating oh. for us in our what would, lives? What would I do? It would, just, it would be terrible, yeah. right? Like who thinks like that? And it's the same with prayer. You're not always going to feel like praying. It's not always going to, you know, bubble out of you like, yeah. like this wellspring of just life. No, sometimes we have to sit down and say, Lord, well, open up the word, read the word, go to the Psalms. I mean, mm-hmm. Speaking of a, a wonderful trellis, you know, looking at the Psalms, pray the Psalms. Absolutely. Align your heart with, with those prayers from inspired prayers given to us by God and, and see the benefit that it will have for you in your walk with the Lord. And so, yeah, I love, I love uh, this discussion that we're having.